Can Donald Trump really win 350 electoral votes in the 2024 election? In this video, we'll take a look at the states he'll need to win and how he can achieve this historic landslide. Let's head over to the map. We're going to begin by filling in the solid states for Biden, and there really aren't going to be very many of them at all. The only one on the West Coast is going to be California, and this already gives Biden a huge boost, up to 54 electoral votes. So over 10% of the Electoral College is already there for Biden. So Trump really does have a lot of work to do if he wants to get to 350. Biden's also going to win Hawaii, as well as Vermont, Massachusetts, Maryland and the District of Columbia and he will also win the first district of Maine and so with these solid states filled in in a best case scenario for Donald Trump Joe Biden will win just 86 electoral votes as for Trump there are obviously going to be many many more solid states we have the usual solid states of Idaho Montana North and South Dakota Wyoming nearly the entirety of Nebraska as well as Kansas Missouri Oklahoma Arkansas Louisiana Mississippi Alabama South Carolina Tennessee Kentucky West Virginia Indiana and Alaska so these are the typical suspects we have in terms of solid states for Trump and of course Utah but in this scenario we're going to add on states like Iowa and Ohio and for those saying that a 350 electoral vote victory for Trump is unreasonable. Just look at what happened in 2008. Barack Obama wins with 365 electoral votes against an unpopular incumbent. And in that election, Barack Obama won Iowa and Ohio by double digit margins. Fast forward to just 2016, Trump wins both of these states by nearly 10%. So states really can shift a lot, even in the modern era. Two other solid Republican states are going to be Texas and Florida. Texas has been solid for the GOP for a very long time. However, it has gotten closer in recent elections, but in a Trump landslide, it would of course return to its solid status. And in Florida, 30 electoral votes. This state is a new addition to the solid Republican column. The state has been very close in the last few elections, but Republicans have made serious gains with Ron DeSantis winning re-election in 2022 as governor by a 20-point margin. And the final solid Trump state on this map is going to be North Carolina worth 16 electoral votes. The state has been pretty close in recent elections. In 2020, Biden only lost by 1.3%, but in a solid scenario, it's going to get just above 12%. And for this scenario, we're going to assume around a 5 to 10% shift in favor of Donald Trump in many of these key states. That's what he's going to need if he wants to win by an electoral landslide. And it's not completely unreasonable if the economy gets worse again if Joe Biden's health continues to be even a bigger issue we could be living in a situation where Donald Trump could realistically get to 350 electoral votes. He got to 306 in 2016, and there were many states that were also super close. Look at states like Minnesota and New Hampshire. Hillary Clinton won these two states by margins less than 2%. So 350 is not as unreasonable as some may think if you just look at the 2020 map. And so North Carolina is going to add another 16 electoral votes to the solid Trump category and we also have the second district of Maine so with the solid states for Trump he is already at 235 electoral votes while Joe Biden is behind at just 86. Before we continue, only 13% of you guys are subscribed, so please consider subscribing and following me on Twitter for daily political updates. Moving on to the likely states, there are going to be quite a few for both Biden and Trump. We're going to start off with the likely Biden states. Now, many of these states were solid for the incumbent president in 2020 and have traditionally been very solid states for Democrats in general. But in a scenario like this, of course, Biden is going to do a lot worse in nearly every single state. So Washington is going to be a likely Democratic state. Oregon isn't even going to make it into the likely Democratic column. We're also going to see a much closer election in New York, 28 electoral votes. Now, a lot of people are saying that Republicans can realistically win New York, 
on the presidential level, that is not true. It is still a very blue state. Now, admittedly, Republicans are making a lot of gains in the state. As we saw in 2022, Lee Zeldin almost defeated incoming Governor Kathy Hochul. So Republicans do have a future in New York, as they do in a state like Florida, which they were able to flip pretty quickly. But as of right now, New York is still a pretty blue state. And even in a worst case scenario for Joe Biden, it would be unrealistic to say he's going to win it by less than 5%. Neighboring states, Connecticut and Rhode Island, are also going to be likely for the incumbent president, and even his home state of Delaware isn't safe from going to the president by less than 12%. So many of these states that you would typically consider to be easy victories for Biden are going to be a lot more difficult if Trump can really get to 350 now, before we get to the likely Trump states, I'm going to go over some of the lean of Biden states first because there are still some pretty key Democratic states left, notably Oregon, Illinois, New Jersey. So we just want to get these states out of the way. Starting off with Oregon, it is definitely the most conservative out of the three Pacific states. It had a pretty close gubernatorial election in 2022. The outgoing Democratic governor was pretty unpopular, and the Democrat Tina Kotek was able to eventually win, but it was definitely a lot more difficult than it should have been. Illinois is also going to be significantly closer. This state went to Clinton and Biden by around 17 points. That margin can definitely shrink to under five in a scenario like this. Chicago is the only thing keeping Illinois blue right now, and even that isn't going well for Democrats. Illinois is shifting to the right. Generally, it is a pretty slow shift, but there is definitely movement. And just like New York, Republicans could have a future in this former Democratic stronghold. New Jersey, 14 electoral votes. It was solid for both Clinton and Biden. But in a best case scenario for Trump in 2024, that margin could really go down by quite a bit. We have Bob Menendez, who was just indicted again for corruption, and he is definitely not helping the Democratic Party in New Jersey. And so with all of the solid, likely, and lean states filled in for Joe Biden, he is only at 181 electoral votes. We are now left with 122 electoral votes, and Trump is going to have to win nearly all of them if he wants to get to 350. We're going to start with some of the more obvious likely Trump states, the states of Arizona and Georgia. Both of these states were likely for Trump in 2016. He won them by around 5%. He lost them very, very narrowly in 2020, but he's not going to have trouble winning them back, even if Trump doesn't do as well as he possibly could, even if he just does a very incremental better than he did last time, he is going to win back these two states. Joe Biden is an unpopular president, and it's very difficult to see him winning these two states again, considering just how close they were before. Yes, these two states are shifting left. Democrats are doing better and better. They have all four Senate seats from the two states, although you could say Kirsten Sinema became an independent, but she did win as a Democrat. So both of these states have trended pretty significantly to the left in recent years, but Trump can definitely hold that reversal with a strong victory in 2024. The Upper Rust Belt is going to be the next to go. Before Trump won the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania in 2016, they had voted for Democrats in every single presidential election for nearly 30 years. If there's one region where Trump has made the most impact electorally, it is going to be the Midwest. These three states are now some of the most competitive in the country. But before this, if you look at states like Iowa and Ohio, these states were likely for Obama. Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania were also likely Obama states in 2008 and some in 2012. But in 2016, Trump flipped nearly the entirety of the Midwest. He was very close to winning Minnesota. Illinois was much closer than before. And this trend continues as Democrats have not been able to gain back that dominance they had just a decade ago. And so for Donald Trump, he is going to win all three of the upper Rust Belt states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, by likely margins in a best-case scenario. And this is going to continue to move the Midwest to the right, and that's a pretty big deal considering that it is currently the most important region in the country electorally. 
And the final likely Republican state is going to be Nevada. It could go to Trump either way, but in a best case scenario, it's certainly going to go to the former president and it is going to be likely the state voted for Biden by less than 3% in 2020. And in 2022, the incumbent governor, a Democrat, Steve Sisolak, he lost his re-election to Joe Lombardo and the silver state is now governed by a Republican. And Hispanic voters are also shifting away from the Democratic Party. And and of course, there are many of them in Nevada. And as a result, Republicans are likely to win Nevada at some point. And a best case scenario in 2024 for Trump would only accelerate that shift. Now, there are also going to be some states Trump is going to win by a smaller margin. These are going to be the lean states. He's going to win them by margins between 1 and 5%. And the first lean state on this map we have is Minnesota, a state that has not voted Republican since the 70s. It is one of the most competitive states in the country now. And in 2016, Hillary Clinton only won Minnesota by 1%. So the state has had a very long streak of voting for Democrats, but it is not nearly as blue as it once was. It was the only state not to go to Ronald Reagan in 1984. And in a best case scenario for Trump, he is certainly going to break that streak. In the final lean Republican state is going to be New Hampshire. The state only voted for Clinton by 0.5% in 2016, so it can definitely get close, and Republicans can definitely win, as they currently have a Republican governor. He may be pretty moderate, but it does show that New Hampshire can open up to Republicans, and that is why Trump is going to win in this best-case scenario. He will also win back the 2nd District of Nebraska, a district that Biden carried by 7 points in 2020. And so this puts Trump up at 327 electoral votes. And there are going to be a few more states to be filled in. These are going to be the tilt states. First of all, Trump is going to win in New Mexico five electoral votes. The state has a Hispanic majority. It's the only state to have that. And of course, like we talked about with Nevada, as Hispanics continue to shift to the right, Trump is only going to do better and better in the state of New Mexico. He would also win Virginia a state that Hillary Clinton carried by less than 5% in 2016, despite running with a Virginia senator as her running mate. And so Virginia, 13 electoral votes, will also boost Trump. And he's also going to win the at-large vote in Maine, two electoral votes. In a best-case scenario for Trump, the first district is still going to be solid for Biden, but it's going to be around 15% instead of 23, which was the margin in 2020. And that second district is going to get a lot more red, pushing Trump over the edge in the at-large vote. And the final state to be filled in on this map is Colorado. 10 electoral votes It's going to go to Joe Biden by a tilt margin. The state is simply too blue for Trump to win, even in a best-case scenario. It is quite a bit more Democratic-leaning than a state like New Mexico, Virginia, or Minnesota. And so even in this Trump landslide scenario, I do have trouble seeing him winning the state. So cracking 350 is going to be very, very difficult, but this would still be the equivalent of a modern-day landslide. It is going to be a blowout for Trump. Joe Biden isn't going to stand a chance if this could even be a remote possibility. And so as of right now, the best case scenario for Donald Trump has him winning 347 electoral votes to Joe Biden's 191.